I know that you guys have been very disappointed with the 50 series launch so far with some utterly confusing and underwhelming products topped off with scarce availability and ridiculous pricing. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 could be the most disappointing card yet and NVIDIA knows it but it's not because of NVIDIA, it's because of AMD and we can't talk about that yet. So when the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 Founders Edition showed up after NVIDIA claimed RTX 5070, 4090 performance at 549. I was rightfully very skeptical and so were all of you guys out there. Even the 5080 didn't touch the RTX 4090. So what chance does the RTX 5070 have? Spoiler alert, it's on average about as fast as the GeForce RTX 4070 Ti within a margin of error, and on average only about 5-8% to 8 faster than the RTX 4070 Super, but how much faster is it than the RTX 4070? And did we get the RTX 4070 Ti again, but for 549 US dollars? The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 Founders Edition is based on the new Blackwell architecture, the GeForce RTX 5070 has 12 gigabytes of GDDR7 VRAM with a 192-bit wide memory interface. It uses PCIe 5.0. It's kind of like a shrunken down version of the RTX 5080 and 5090 Founders cards. As for the pricing for the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 Founders Edition, it's going to go for around about 549 US dollars. As for Australian pricing, we don't get the Founders cards here. I'll preemptively predict that stock availability is going to be bad according to every AIB partner that I've spoken to about the 5070. All right, straight over to testing. To test the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 Founders Edition, I used our AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D test system. I also included about 12 other cards for a bit of comparison to give you a good sample of performance. I didn't test with Linux this time around as I felt like I'd save that for later and I also forgot to include the RTX 4070 Ti Super because I forgot that it existed. I do have one but I quite literally forgot to test it. Feel free to pause the video at any time to take a look at these graphs for a little bit longer because there's quite a lot of data here. Or data. Alright, let's start off with an oldie but a goodie, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We're doing this with the highest preset with no upscaling. First of all, at 1440p, the 5070 is about 1% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti and about 8% faster than the RTX 4070 Super and about 12% faster than the Radeon 9700 GRE and finally, about 22% faster than the RTX 4070. At 4K, the RTX 5070 is about 7% faster than the RTX 4070 Super and around about 7% slower than the Radeon RX 9700 XT. On to Unigen Superposition, first off with 1080p Extreme. The GeForce RTX 5070 is about 2% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti on average and about 54% faster than the RTX 4070 on average. Over to 1440p custom with depth of field and motion blur disabled, we're seeing that the RTX 5070 is about 3% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti and around about 28% faster than the RTX 4070 on average. At 4K optimized, the RTX 5070 is about 4% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti and about 27% faster than the RTX 4070. Next up is Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered with the very high preset. This uses either DLSS or FSR 3.1 with both of those set to quality mode. At 1440p, the GeForce RTX 5070 is around about 5% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti and around about 6% faster than the 4070 on average. Get this, at 4K, I found my first repeatable anomaly with the RTX 5070. The RTX 5070 is 6% slower than the RTX 4070 at 4K. I retested this for about two hours because it was so baffling to me. Even with the non-founders card that I have on hand, I saw basically the same thing. It was slower with that card too. This has got to be 
just about one of the weirdest results that I've ever seen. It just doesn't make sense. Over to Cyberpunk 2077 with the Ultra preset with no ray tracing with either DLSS or FSR enabled. Starting off at 1440p, the Radeon RX 7900 GRE runs a 9% circle around the 5070. However, the 5070 is 6% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti and around about 38% faster than the RTX 4070. At 4K, the RTX 5070 is about 15% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti and around about 55% faster than the RTX 4070. Moving on to Call of Duty Black Ops 6, we're using the Ultra preset with either DLSS or FSR 3.1 set to performance mode. At 1440p, the RTX 5070 is about 9% slower than the RTX 4070 Ti and around about 9% faster than the RTX 4070. At 4K, I found another anomaly. The RTX 5070 is about 4% slower than the RTX 4070 Super and around about 12% slower than the RTX 4070 Ti. This is so weird. Again, I retested this over and over with another RTX 5070 I have, and I also got this result. It's just, I don't get what's happening with 4K on this card. Lastly, onto Black Myth Wukong. We're using the cinematic preset, which is brutal, and I set either DLSS or FSR to performance mode with full ray tracing enabled on all cards. This benchmark basically beats every GPU into submission. At 1440p, the RTX 5070 is about 19% faster than the RTX 4070 and around about 2% slower than the RTX 4070 Ti. Moving over to 4K, the RTX 5070 is about 26% faster than the RTX 4070 and exactly the same as the RTX 4070 Ti. Over all of these tests, we can then calculate the overall average performance of all the cards to give you an idea of how the RTX 5070 compares. At 1440p, the RTX 5070 is around about 1% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti and around about 21% faster than the RTX 4070. As for gen on gen uplift, 20% is about what I expected for the RTX 5070. At 4K though, the RTX 5070 is about 2% slower than the RTX 4070 Ti and around about 18% faster than the RTX 4070 overall. What's interesting is it's only 5% faster than the RTX 4070 Super and just 3% faster than the Radeon RX 7900 GRE. At idle, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 Founders Edition consumed 11 watts of power and at full load, it was pulling around about 250 watts of power over our one hour stress testing period. On the temperature side, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 Founders Edition idled quite high at 43 degrees Celsius, while at full load, both the GPU and junction temperature hit 79 and 80 degrees respectively. The Founders card does run quite warm, but I don't think it's anything to be overly concerned about. What can I say about the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070? Well, it's definitely one of the graphics cards of all time. <laughs> yep. On a far more serious note, while you might be forgiven for thinking that the RTX 5070 is just an outright bad card, in context, it's really not. Even though the CES announcement claimed that RTX 5070, 4090 performance at 549. Who are we kidding? We knew that wasn't true. This is classic NVIDIA. It's the old Obi-Wan and Luke scenario. So what I told you was true from a certain point of view. A certain point of view? It's impossible without artificial intelligence. I can't do it, Ben. Mm, maybe if it had 4090 performance for 549. Yoda spoke of another. However, when comparing the RTX 5070 to the RTX 4070, it's about 20% faster and about 50 US dollars cheaper than the RTX 4070's original launch price. While you might automatically compare the 5070 to the 4070 Ti, 
based on both the launch prices and performance, that might not be a fair comparison. The 4070 Ti launched at almost 800 US dollars. I know this is supposed to be some generational uplift and typically, as history shows us, the 70 class cards are faster than the 80 class cards from the generation before. We found that not to be the case with 50 series as a whole. The real question is, should we accept that as being the new reality with newer generation cards? Well, the truth is, I don't have a very good answer right now, but make sure you subscribe because with the launch of the Radeon RX 9070 and the 9070 XT just 24 hours away, we'll be able to share the whole story and it's a very juicy one. While at the moment I'm pretty burnt out on GPUs and overall just not very excited about any products from anyone, I see people complaining about pricing, performance and availability and yet these cards are still selling out. The people who aren't saying anything are the people buying these cards. At the same time, I think to myself, these cards selling out must be fake because low supply doesn't automatically mean high demand. It doesn't mean that lots of units are being moved. It doesn't really mean anything. Anyways, at the end of the day, I'm just giving you numbers from a bunch of tests that I ran and ultimately it's your money. I can't make you spend it. However, wait 24 hours before making any decisions on anything. It may be worth your while.